Good morning. This field, oh, it's 15 August 2022, year of our Lord. So this field hasn't been touched in a long time. Uh, I mowed it, sprayed glyphosate, and it worked. Filled it pretty good. Now, I gotta break this apart. And because it hasn't been touched or worked up in a long time, the best way to go about it is to take the time and work it up. I've rototilled these in the past. I have a six foot rototiller, but it just takes days. Like it would take probably two days to do it. So what I'm gonna take is this digger here. Spring tooth digger. I'm gonna break up the vegetation with that first. Then I may go get the rototiller. Go a lot faster, or a lot, maybe a lot better with it. I'll have to see how it breaks apart. I may go over it twice with this, and then use my cultivator, roller basket cultivator that I've been using. I really like this cultivator because, for one thing, you can go a little faster. It just collects too much vegetation between the cultivators. So if I can get break up that vegetation good enough, um, then I could use this and go a lot faster and hopefully get it done. You know, I got two acres to do. Uh, and I'd like to get this job done today, all of it. From working it up, fertilizing and planting. So I'm gonna get started, see how it goes, and give you some updates. Okay, it is hard, and I'm basically just pulling the top off. It's really hard ground, and uh, so much vegetation there, I gotta pull the top off first, and then hopefully get down, but, I mean, this has gotta be worked up, so, that's just the way it is. So I had to go do what I was kind of dreading, but I had to get the rototiller to get the job done right. I'm gonna rototill. One good thing is I got it broke apart, and I'm hoping that the rototiller will finish it. Um, I can always go back over it to finish finish with the cult roller basket cultivator, but we'll see what kind of job this does. My back is absolutely killing me from that deep tin tip digger. I mean, these tractors, I had a milestone today of hitting 2,000 hours on the old tractor. She's a 2016. And um, I'm telling you, the seats are not made for long hours in it. It's just, a, it's just they're just not. Hopefully we can change that. Always interesting with the rotor tiller. It always brings adventures of repairs and what I'm gonna hit. I am a little nervous about all those roots I had up earlier uh, on the other plots, but uh, just go slow and steady. And hopefully, win this race. Okay, uh, last row here. Uh, it's rough still, but I uh, got a lot of dirt showing. Um, should get somewhat of a plot this year. It's gonna have to be worked up again next year. It's gonna be a process. There's a lot of suggestions I have for the uh, landowner on it to uh, improve them. Um, so we'll see. I gotta come back with some utilization cages to prove what I did worked. And uh, yeah, we need rain. Okay, today is August 17, 2022, year of our Lord. I am at Morgan's Composting. I've posted many times about this before. Um, today I'm getting some lime with a lime spreader. And um, I'm also getting their Layered Ash Blend, their um, original product they came up with back in the 90s when they started. And... Um, 
There's no, uh, they, they can't explain, I mean, they can explain why it works, but why it works so great is something that we, is, uh, tough to explain, I guess. Um, it just does. And, you know, it's product of cow manure, chicken manure. It's got, um, potash or layered ash in it, not potash. So it's got layered ash, a lot of, you know, basically earth materials that are separated um, and then combined together to make a good product. So I'll show you a little bit of it. Um, right now I'm getting the lime spreader. I'm gonna get the layered ash blend delivered. The problem is is like this is this is chaos around here organized chaos but chaos it is and it's hard to get a spreader it's hard to find out where you're going um the communication is getting better but there's no one here to hold your hand and take you through the steps um there is no checklist there is no like map that says this is where the lime is this is where you go here this is where you do this this is where you do that nothing so luckily you know i've been here many many times um and i kind of know what to do and number one is being patient got to be patient and um and just ask questions when you see someone so i'm gonna go through this and get this in and I'm on uh, number um, let's see 14 of 21 properties 14 or 15 real quick so here's another issue with you know getting the bulk is uh, you know I'm going down US 10 at 30 miles an hour and my flashers on trying to get over and busy road getting past and uh, it's challenging but I don't have to go very far so a few more miles and I'm there you can't do it if you're going over 10 miles I don't know if I would do it I've done it before but not easy Okay, here we are, it's running really well, as always. This plot doesn't need very much, like one ton or so. So, uh, we're almost done. Got a couple more to do, then we'll get that fertilizer done. Thank you. Okay, I wish you could smell it. It burns your nose. Um, good stuff though. So I'm gonna put it down, hopefully at about uh, a half a ton or a little more an acre. Or around there I mean that's kind of the hard part is calibrating it getting exactly down how much you want down and then um, you know evenly spread but you know usually you could call I think I'm gonna cultivate it in after looking at the plots well it's just another step but it's a good step even though the planter does you know kind of work it in a little bit but gotta unhook the spreader load it hook back up to the spreader hopefully I can get all this in one but I don't know it's a five ton spreader they delivered me four ton I don't know if I can get it all in or not okay just getting wrapped up here with the fertilizer and I am going to cultivate some some um, some plots are good I don't really need to cultivate them some plots kind of like this one um, 
I, I want to go over a little bit, but uh, yeah, uh, plugging along and getting things done so far so good. And if I would have planted this, I mean, I it's pretty dusty. We haven't had any rain. That's, what to speak, you know, not to speak of a little bit, but uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm kind of like, man, if I would have seeded, let's say even two weeks ago. What would the seed be doing right now? Getting ate by the birds and stuff? I don't know. Um, or just cracking in the sun? I'm not sure. Friday, August 19, observing a couple, nice sized doe in the backyard, and uh, kind of brought to my attention about shooting doe and my take on it. I, um, I like to shoot doe late season, and the number of doe I like to take is kind of goes off of observation, camera data, um, how many fawns I've been seeing, how many deer in general I've been seeing. But the first doe I take, and I usually go after gun season, take them as late as possible is what I do. And I always like to take one if I haven't shot a buck or something like that first. Uh, or if I do shoot a buck, I'd like to take two doe. Um, controlling the doe population is very important. A lot more Time goes into it than just a couple minutes here, but I want to give you my take on how I kind of select a doe. I want to take the oldest doe that I see without fawns. Um, these two doe, I don't think have fawns. I've been seeing them on trail camera too, and I think they're just hanging out. Why? I don't know. They could have lost them. Lots of reasons why they, they don't have them. Uh, number two... I like to take the oldest doe I see that has a button buck. The biggest reason is if you take that mama doe out, uh, that buck is more likely to grow up on or around your property. And number three, my my reason is uh, I, I just take the, after that, after I, if I can't get those two, I'll take the first available good doe that I see that's good shot. So there's a kind of quick, quick take on how I uh, go about controlling my dose. Okay, Saturday, 20 August, 2022, year of our Lord. This will be my last video this week. I'll put this together, get it out Monday morning. Today I am, got a lot, just a few more couple fruit plots to do. <coughs> Excuse me, here's a fertilizer uh, option. This is a product by Morgan's Composting in Sears, Michigan. This is a pellet. This is Dairy Dew. That stuff I was spreading this week. Bulk. See it out of that dump truck? This is in a pellet form. They took it to um, a place that makes wood pellets that, for a wood stove. And they pelletized the stuff. Now, it, I'm putting it in this cone spreader under, behind the tractor. Um, you know, because they're big pellets, it just takes a little bit longer for them to come out, but they do come out. Um, I experimented with this earlier this year, and the it's really got to rain hard for the pellets to break down, but they do. Um, I would say they're super slow release, but... If we get a good rain, like if you got a steady slow rain all day and let's say it rained an inch, it might be enough to break it down. Um, now I, I'm putting this down first and then I'll plant over it and it'll get into the soil. If it doesn't rain, it's, they're not gonna break down. P pretty much plain and simple. Eventually they will. Uh, throughout the winter or whatever, but um, it'll be okay. It's kind of a way of soil building and 
fertilizing at the same time, much, much cheaper than conventional, and better, mind you, than conventional fertilizer. So there's my two minutes. Thank you so much for watching this week. I really appreciate the views and the comments on the questions. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. I got We got school starting. I'm going to be a soccer coach. We got music events coming up. We got football games, uh, varsity football games coming up. So we have, of course, getting ready for hunting season. Uh, we got a lot going on. That's good, I guess. Staying busy. Thank you. God bless you. And, um, you know, aim, aim small, miss small. <laughs>